Hi, this video will show you how you can implement a radio button in App Inventor. App Inventor, at least in this implementation or release, doesn't have a built-in radio button. Radio buttons, you know, work by allowing only one of several choices to work, as you can see on the screen. I have four buttons, button one, two, three, and button more. Each one has an image associated with it. So if I slide things over, you can see that each button has an, has an image radio open. Okay. And I've made sure that the images for radio filled and radio open both have the same dimensions. Now, the when the image uh, when the application runs uh, the reset button clears all the images let's look at the blocks editor to see how this has been implemented this is what happens when button one is clicked as you can see the radio filled button is assigned uh, radio filled image is assigned to button one, all the others get the open image. I can do the same thing for all the other buttons. This is not a very efficient way of doing it, but it will work. Let me show you what that looks like. Here you can see all the buttons with all the assignments being made. Now in each case, except for the reset button, the button is assigned, that's clicked, is assigned the open, uh, sorry, the filled image. So when button one is clicked, it gets the filled image. When button two is clicked, it gets the filled image, and so forth. When the reset button is clicked, it only gets assigned the open button. The, the buttons get the open button. Now there's another way of doing this. It's called using a procedure. I'm going to create a procedure which will turn all the buttons off. Under the built-in tab, under definitions, you'll see something called procedures. There are two, but this is the one I'll use right now. And I'll name it Buttons Off. And what I'll do is I'll, turn, I'll have this turn all the buttons off. Use a little sneaky trick here by copying this and discarding that. So this is my buttons off procedure and what it does is it makes all the radio buttons off how does it work well what you need to do is you have to call a procedure that's a technical term calling it's very similar to calling something on the telephone you call on the telephone and because you've called whatever has received the call does whatever it's been asked to do in this case this procedure opens up all the buttons. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to look in my blocks, my definitions, and there it is, buttons off. The other uh, things you see there came from a previous uh, work. It says call buttons off, and now what should happen is when I click the reset button it should turn off all the buttons let's go see if that works here's our emulator and if I click the reset button what's going to happen is when the reset button is clicked the call buttons off sorry the buttons off procedure is called and these commands are implemented. That is to say, all the radio buttons are made open. Well, that, so that's good, but it doesn't seem like there have been much of a savings or much efficiency. But we can use the same thing to get the buttons, uh, to get the buttons when they're clicked to change to show the radio button. Let me show you that. What's going to happen is the following. See for button more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these. 
call the button off and then buttons off procedure and then I'm going to say um, then I'm going to tell the button more image to be the filled image once again with button more when button more gets clicked it will call the buttons off procedure which means all these things will be done all the buttons will be set to open and then I'll set the image to be filled for the one I want you say well it looks like I'm doing more work than I need to because what's going to happen is with buttons off I'm going to set the more button to open and then I'm going to set it to be closed isn't that a lot of work let's see what happens when it actually gets implemented first of all we're going to see that it actually does work so that works how do you like that so what I can do is I can do the same thing for all the other buttons and you'll see that the code is easy, is seems to be smaller and it's certainly more readable I'm going to pause the recording right now to do make that change okay I've made all the changes and as you can see the codes a lot more readable all the buttons are turned off and then image one is filled or image two sorry button one two three or four is filled so it's a lot easier to see this code than to understand it there's another trick that can be done with procedures now this procedure when it's called just does this when it's finished control goes back to the place from which it was called so when I clicked on the more button it called buttons off went through here then came back and continued by filling in the image for the more button let me show you another way that we can create an, a procedure. There's another procedure called procedure with result. And I'm going to call this turn, turn off. Buttons or turn on sorry turn on and I'm going to have almost the same thing here but one other thing turn on turns off all the buttons and then it has this return statement here what this return statement is is what gets sent back if you imagine the analogy with a telephone call a call is made the procedure completes and then it returns or sends something back what it's going to send back is the name of the image to use and here's how it would work I'm going to use button more as the example and what I'm going to do is look at the procedure that I've created we'll turn on and what's going to happen here is that when button one is clicked sorry when button more is clicked this is the only command that gets executed this says set the image to oh wait a minute I have to call turn on it calls turn on which opens up all these puts the open image on all the buttons and then sends back this message meaning set the image on button more to whatever turn on tells you to do and this is what turn on tells the more button to set itself to let's see it in action
Okay, here's the emulator. And let's see, button more. It seems to work the same way, and it does. So let me just make the changes to all the other buttons. Okay, that's what it looks like. Button 1, button, button 2, button 3, and button more get turned on. And if I click the reset button, it goes to button off. If you want to see it on the emulator, here we go. There's the emulator, and again, it looks exactly the same because it's doing pretty much the same stuff. If you look, though, in the blocks editor, you say, hmm, look at this. Turn on and buttons off have code that's in common. What we can actually do to simplify this is the following. Sorry. When we call turn on, turn on in, tur in turn calls button off. When button off is finished, comes back and then sends this message back to the button. Let's see it in action. Okay, here we go. Same stuff. It works. Now, one of the reasons for doing this is that if you have to make a change, so for example, you had to change what the open button or the filled button looked like, you only have to make changes in a few places instead of through all of these buttons. There is one other advantage, and that is if I want to make a sound associated with clicking the button, I only have to put the sound in the turn on procedure. Let me show you that. I'm going back to the component designer. In the component designer, I've already uploaded something called bubble click, and I'm going to add a sound player here. It doesn't show up as visible. You can see that. However, when I look in the blocks editor, under my blocks, you'll see there's a sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, when I initialize the screen, I'm going to set the sound source to, I'm going to type in text, the name of that player, the uh, name of that sound, and when I go to turn on, after I turn bubbles off, the buttons off, what I will do is I will play the sound. So every time I click one of these buttons, the ones that do turn on, I will be able to see, I will be able to hear the sound. Let's see if it works. Okay, I had to reinitialize my editor, my <clears throat> my emulator, and so now if I click on either any of these buttons, I hear the sound because what happens is when I click on button one, it goes to turn on, turn on, turns all the buttons off, which means this, and then it plays the sound which was initialized when the screen was initialized. But when I click on reset, the reset button just goes to buttons off, which means it goes through this and does not play the sound. Well, I hope that helps, and you realize that to play the sound, I only had to call the sound, pl sound player only once in this procedure. Have any suggestions? Let me know.